Coming up on Talk is Cheap, we're going to Planet Circle. This is in the Zedite Reticuli system, inhabited by the Evans. Find out what the trip entailed. We're bringing the Jeeps, lawnmowers, motorcycles. Oh my. Up next on Talk is Cheap. Talk is cheap, or cheap as talk, and talk is cheap. I'm Dan Holfeld, back again, of course, and with me. The uh, infamous Dusty Long. That's how I want to watch. Infamous? I don't know. And to my left, <gasps> nobody again. Uh, again. <laughs> but I got all this elbow space <laughs> that I don't need. You could lay out and do it laying down, you know? Yeah. I can do the, uh, what's this guy named from Mad TV? Stewart. Stewart? Stewart. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, <laughs> that, that's Pete in the background screaming. Uh, but he'll be joining us. I think I'm going to, uh, he should be able to join me in the next episode. We'll see what happens. But I got to, I got to pull a leg or two for that one. So, uh, we had some calls again. Uh, we have two of them actually here to play. So let's go through the first one. I really like these calls. I do too. Let's get an interaction with the audience. Yeah, it's really cool. Oh, very good. Talk is cheap. Number one American conspiracy show. Very good. And that was it on that one. I, no name, no location. I, I usually like you to make sure you leave your name or location. But. Do we now have to say long distance and international uh, rates apply? Because he sounded a little uh, Asian-ish. Well, maybe there's like the like sections, you know, how they got like Chinatown. and. Oh, okay. Maybe yeah. it's still in the States. India, America. Oh, that was great. <laughs> so... <laughs> So we got another one from Kevin Parks. Now he's talking about the Masons here. Now he, he pushing that time limit again. <laughs> I'm doing you a favor, bro, but try to keep it under a minute. Oh, hey, guys. This is uh, Kevin Parks again. I just called a few minutes ago and left a message. Um, but also I wanted to call again about something. Um, this is about, you know, my, my grandfather and my great-grandfather were both 33rd-degree Masons, okay? And so I got a lot of things passed down to me. That's pretty scary. And uh, so one of the things was a plaque that... Uh, that said, you know, what what it is to be a Mason. And so I just wanted to find out what you think about what this says, what you think about, you know, what it means. So it's because it, for me, it's like Star Wars stuff. You know, I don't even know what to say about it. So it starts off the work of a true and loyal Mason. And it says to wear the square and act upon it in all his daily needs. To meet all men upon the level and meet them with truth and charity, which is great. To be loyal to his order and ever master of himself, to travel ever eastward from the feeble light of an entered apprentice toward the glorious light of wisdom, to be prepared for the final password and given entrance to the supreme order of the universe. Okay, so can you please, you know, take a listen to this. Tell me what you think what this means, like, because I have, I mean, it, it is, you know, it's just, it's mind-boggling to me. Um, I put a video on YouTube that uh, where I talk about this, and uh, I have just nothing but no no likes. Everyone dislikes it, so I'm thinking that this is some, uh, I like maybe I shouldn't have even mentioned this. Like this is maybe something that should have been kept under the wraps. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to find out what you think. All right, buddies. Have a good night. Hope you guys enjoy all that good seafood out there, man. Bye-bye. <laughs> and he made the reference to seafood because we did the Organism 46B when he saw that called in. Oh, yeah? Yeah, the, okay. the squid in Antarctica. So so what do you think about the – I think that Masons are like these secret groups, of course, and they think they're above everybody else. So, of course, they want to have that, you know, brotherhood, yeah. keep everything locked and tight and – I know a Mason, um, met him in college, and he was, I don't know, he was just starting out. Uh, matter of fact, he used me as a reference uh, to for his character. And when I gave the his reference, they asked me to join, uh, in which case I wanted to. And I still want to, to be honest. I, I would love to. I, I might even give this up if I could get some you know glimmer of information. Um, I do know that everything the Masons has passed down um, 
by word of mouth. Nothing's written, and anything that is written is written in a way that doesn't make sense because it's it's a secret society, of course. And, of course, you say secret society, and then yeah. you get conspiracy and everything else. Uh, but that's what he told me. And he made a funny uh, hand gesture when he did it. He said, you know, he, like, pinched his fingers. He said word of mouth. Like, like I felt like that meant something for some reason um, because the man was a, a pretty tight-lipped, kind of quiet feller. But, I mean, that just kind of stood out in my mind. I know there was a mason uh, in the in-law side of my family, and he was pretty high up there too. Uh, but what it says to me, I mean, what these secret societies do is they, they make a really flowery, you know, uh, thing when they talk about anything. It's, it's very convoluted. It's very, like I said, flowery and everything else. So if you were to go ahead and just, like, take the basic understanding of the, the weak light of the east to the west, say, or however that went, well— if the weak light's the apprentice, which is what they said, then the bright white light would be, you know, rising through the ranks of masonry until you get to the uh, um, the, the inner upper circle, say. And that kind of sounds the same thing to me. Um, it's interesting because the Masons have a really interesting history, as you know, in the South. When Putin's a Mason, uh, the Bush, Bush and Clinton were both Masons. Um, there's pictures of them three together, I believe. Were they? I know that they were in Skull and Bones. Uh, I think they were Masons, too. I want to say they were. I think there's a picture of all three of them dressed in See, I think the robes. Masons were fine, and then, like, because George Washington was, and then I think mm-hmm. it kind of got corrupted, and then it made into this secret order thing, and they want to act like they're better than everybody else. And that happens once you get to the higher degrees, because the research I did, the low degrees don't know much. They think they're doing all this good stuff, and they do. Mm-hmm. And then once you start getting up to, like, that 33rd degree, then all of a sudden it's... You're in this order. They have blackmail on you, and they kind of got you. And and it's all hypothetical, though, too, because they're so tight-lipped. And that's what that's what they lose it. That romance, you know, it romanticizes the whole thing. There's no one that's a mason that's come out and said, "Here's what they do." I mean, yeah, because they're not supposed to. They're not supposed to. They actually have this thing. I looked it up. Like if you tell their secrets, they'll they had this hand gesture or hand sign or something like that where they'll cut your tongue off is what it meant. Really? So that it's really controlled. And there's not, and the thing of it is, there's a lot of things that do that. I mean, um, there's a Catholic religion out there that's quite radical. Uh, the one that Tom Cruise is in, they're so tight-lipped and there's no one that's coming forth. They instantly get a bad name. Now, I'm not saying the Masons are good or nor evil, you know, because one is perspective and then two, it's, it's whatever your objective is. Uh, the Masons want to rule the world. And right now the world is, for lack of a better world uh, or word, shite. Uh, so if they are running it and they want world domination, well, they're doing it wrong and we don't like them, right? Because uh, of the way it's at. I think they're losing the control. But anyway, so, Kevin, that's our two yeah. cents. Take take it for what it is. Um, great interaction. Like I said, I thank you for su- your subscription. Yeah. And if you guys want to call in and suggest a topic or leave a message, say hi. We'll air them on here. It's very fun. That's 256-510-5234. 256-510-K2D4. Keep it to a minute or less. This phone number is in Alabama, and that's a, a landline number. So don't, if you're calling from a landline, it'll be long distance, but you should be all right on a cell phone. I don't know how that works from other countries. <laughs> so, uh, International rates apply. You might be able to do like a Skype thing or something like that. I don't know. But, <laughs> but yeah, this is fun. And uh, I will say if you probably give us a topic calling in, you put in the extra effort, and I'm probably going to make sure to we try to cover those ahead of the other ones. So again, that number is 256-510-5234. 256-510-K2D4. That is a great number. I love the number. I, I really searched did, and yeah. searched and searched and searched. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> it's in Alabama. All right. Alabama. All right. Today I am covering Project Serple. Now this topic was suggested by Mike Landsman. This is such a cool topic. Like if anything should be made into a movie, this is it. I was on like my edge of my seat the whole time. Wait, wait does this beat out my last topic? Because that sounded like an action flick too. Well, that yeah. could be. Too. Maybe they could be sequels. No, or... this. I, I want to say this one does beat. Oh, okay, all right. I like this. This is all the type right. of movie that I would watch. Okay. So what? So I'm going to break this down real simple right here. What it basically is is an exchange program between Earth and Planet Serple in Zeta Reticuli. Amazing. So, in 2005, an anonymous retired government employee supplied info about the exchange program, and this was put on a website 
and you on your last episode you did uh that was interviewed by carrie cassidy from project camelot bill ryan's the other guy from project camelot okay. he put a website together called project circle or excuse me circle.org okay and they got all this these leaks that got leaked to him about project circle and you know just every once in a while there'll be one that comes out and i think the last one was published august 5th 2016 that wasn't that very long ago yeah not too bad um but they were really constant in the beginning. And I went through like pretty much every one of these. There's a lot of info on these pages. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to break it down real simple because there was a whole lot of stuff to read here, folks. So, okay. Well, this starts all the way back at the Roswell crash, 1947. Now, there was one survivor, and that was EBE-1, they called him. And he was very intelligent, and he learned English really quickly. The way they talk is like, it's like a high pitch, like, like <laughs> you can like, have a hard time even like trying to translate it. It's like so crazy. Okay. And they're from Project, or they're from the planet Serpo in Zeta Reticuli. Now, when I thought about uh, Roswell, I was thinking grays. These, yeah. these ain't grays. These are Ebens, they call them. Really? That is EBE. MS. Mm-hmm. Ebens. And that's different from the Greys, because the Greys come from Alpha Centauri. How are they different? Like, like in body mass, I mean, do they look similar? Or is Actually, that I'm we glad you asked, great? because I was going to show pictures, and I forgot to bring it up. Oh, see, I, I'm helpful <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> of course, they're drawings, but... Well, no, that's, I mean, yeah, I'm all right with that. So, kind of more... Um, more humanoid? Yeah, they almost look more eyes. Instead of the grays, you're going to have the big, big bulgy yeah, eyes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of what we're looking at. So if Serpo is roughly 40 light years away. It's really like 38 point something. Now they tried, when he crashed, his, a lot of the technology broke in the UFO. Mm-hmm. So he tried to repair all that stuff. And he tried to contact his home planet, Serpo, like six times. They failed all the Every time because the technology wasn't fixed good enough to do that. Okay. And then he ended up passing away in 1952. Now, in December of 1952, the military actually started working on his uh, technology, got the communicator to work, communicated with the Evans, and they were communicating back and forth for nine years. Because how are you going to communicate with a different race that speaks different this is like oh, it's okay. gonna take some time to really understood and yeah. eventually because they were so smart they actually came up with the english translation they figured all our language out and they were mm. able to okay. and then they were sending some stuff back in english but it wasn't like really good complete sentences kind of broken. it was yeah, yeah okay. but they could kind of get the gist of what they meant so then an exchange program was created now this is the first discrepancy because there was like i think there was two different people that leaked some stuff there's two anonymous sources because we don't know who's who so for the first time they said there was 10 men and two women and then later we will learn i think it's even on the main page here i think there must be some says right there, see no right females, here yeah it says yeah. no females were sent and then later on and when i look in here farther though they said all 12 males so hmm. can, can i ask one quick question sure. not to throw you off too much did it explain how they communicated like what that device, device did, was. because I mean, faster than light travel. I mean, you got interdimensional. I just wondered if they had anything about that. Um, I guess I can't say my mind okay. focused on that too much. There was a lot of info here. No, I understood. No, I was but, just wondering. <laughs> I was radio comments in the military. Anything that comes to communication, I'm instantly like, really? <laughs> I assume they just um talked into it. That would be amazing. That's cool as, as far as I know. Okay. Okay, so the, the uh, requirements, they, they had um, all the different sections in the secret or the military and stuff, and they hang posters up and say, do you want to go? The cover story was, do you want to go to the moon for a secret project? Oh, yeah. So they got all these people that were interested, something like 600 people that were interested, and then they had to narrow those down to people that were not married, had no kids, required your on question absence for 10 years because you're the plan is to send these people to Serpo for 10 years and live there and they can't be like well what happened to this dude or oh whatever. yeah so orphans were a good uh pick for them sometimes i wish i was an orphan 
and okay, then they had extensive training. So they were doing a lot of training, you know, how are you going to survive in a ra more radiated planet? How are you going to, mm. you know, if somebody gets hurt, you're going to go through all this training, the G-force training, all that stuff. They really went in depth on this training. Okay. So then in uh, April of 1964, the exchange was to take place. Holloman Air Force Base, and this was approved by John F. Kennedy, two ships landed, and they actually came and only picked up their dead that day. And everybody was kind of confused because they said, okay, this was the day we planned for you to pick our guys up and take them back home. And the Evans just, they said they want to wait one more year. Hmm. Didn't have the housing up, right? <laughs> well, I actually don't even really, it doesn't even really say why they... Um, no. Didn't want to. I was just speculating. They but they just the they took their something. dead uh, crew that crashed in Roswell and took them back home. And uh, is this after we dissected the shit out of them? That's a good question. Yeah, I never, they weren't very I pleased. Never, maybe I don't know. I never, maybe they saw the bodies like you. You can wait. <laughs> that'll lead to an important part later. So hold Ooh, on to that thought. Gotcha. Understood. <laughs> <laughs> so if I don't cover it, remind me. <laughs> <laughs> if I can remember, yes. Okay, so then in July in 1965, the exchange took place. Now, here, they got the short end of the stick. Only one admin came to our place. And you know what? I bet it was a living hell for him because he probably had to stay in the base, Area 51, and they were watching him and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. He probably couldn't really do anything. So now let's talk about the voyage. Let me back up a little bit. Okay, so they get in the scout craft, which was fairly decent size because they have. A, I'll, I'll, I'll go through the list of equipment they took with them later. Went from the scout craft up to the main mothership, which sat in between the moon and Mars. And this thing is huge. Mm -hmm. So then the voyage there took 10 months. So you're talking 40 light years away. So they're going pretty good speed here. And they also had to go, th from what I understood, through some wormholes, if you will, okay. to uh, subtract that time. I would say that's, that could be possible. But when I read this at first, I was like... Ten months, that's a long time for what I thought aliens. But uh, they we're talking back then, so the, uh, on their way back home, it actually took less because their technology was getting better, too. Hmm, okay. So, all right, 40 light years. So they took with them food, medicine, weapons, jeeps, motorcycles. <laughs> they ate ebon food during the trip, and they said it tasted like paper. They couldn't pack enough f***ing supplies for ten months. They, they were trying. This is how it. All right. So they knew they weren't going to have enough food for 10 years. Oh, uh, okay. So they were trying to tr try some other food. And okay. one of the Evans later on when they were on the planet recommended you guys start having one of ours a day and still have your food to try oh, to acclimate yeah. your body. Okay. I say just don't pack one damn Jeep and put another pallet of food on there. And <laughs> But they said no, they packed a lot of stuff. I'm going to get to that list. Oh, okay, okay. It's, it's a, a little crazy. Like, oh, hell no. <laughs> like, how can you fit all that stuff? But okay. All right. <laughs> but the food does like, it almost kind of looked like oatmeal, I guess. It was white. Mm. Tasted like paper. Nice. They were able to communicate with Earth, but this did, I think once they hit the planet, they weren't able to communicate anymore if I remember correctly. So, One person... Go ahead. Let's say, so what were they communicating with before from Earth to them if they can't communicate off of the planet? Yeah, that's a good planet? point. That's another loophole. Okay. I was just wondering, yeah. There's some of the stuff on this story that doesn't make sense. And I'm, the, I'm that yeah. guy. I'm that asshole. Yep, yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry. <laughs> so one person died on the trip to Serpo. Was it the food? <laughs> Pulmonary embolism, which is oh, the blood clot, yep, so yeah. natural causes. Okay. So now when they landed, there was a number of Evans there to greet them. They got off. There was a female spokesperson. She spoke fluent English, so they talked to her most of the time to try to communicate with everybody else mm -hmm. on the planet. Okay. The planet itself had two bright suns, 170 or 107 degrees, excuse me, very discomforting for us on there. Oh, yeah. Only a population of 650,000. And they were, the Evans are the only race, so they didn't have like Latin American Evans or oh, anything yeah, like yeah. that. <laughs> so that's 650, but that's only on the planet. That's not total, though. I mean, just the planet, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so they yeah. Have these motherships, I'm sure they're well supplied with people. And they might have had another civilization somewhere else. Actually, they moved to Serpo from a different planet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because their other one was uninhabitable. I think the. Uh, the volcanic activity, I think, that mm. took over. 
All right, so then they spent, they were supposed to spend 10 years on Serple, but ended up being 13 because wow. the confusion, the two sons, it never got completely dark. One day there for us was 40 hours on that planet. Oh, I suppose, So that, yeah. that would get really confusing. And then they had watches and stuff, but those batteries died and mm -hmm. they couldn't replace them. And they were, when they were there, they were exploring the planet and stuff. And they found out the north part of the hemisphere was cooler so then they moved up there, and then, like I said, they had a two-year supply of food, and then they ate the Ebens food, never liked it. <laughs> <laughs> radiation ended up killing two on the circle. Mm -hmm. Too much radiation from two suns. Oh, yeah, absolutely. On the return home, two liked it so much, they actually stayed behind to live there. I, I don't blame them. It's like, why come back to all this bullshit? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> two liked it so much, even though they're eating paper sludge, and there's a huge amount of radiation. It's 170. Well, as far well, as they have air conditioning, it's, they have to be that advanced, right? See, that's another part I didn't get. They didn't. I'm, I'm sorry. They can communicate. But. <laughs> and go through wormholes, but no one's figured out the air conditioner? But the Ebens, that was a natural temperature for them. So why would they need air conditioners? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> Well, because it makes sense. Well, some people like it warm. I mean, if it gets to be a hundred degrees, you're outside, about, yeah, you're talking about us. But that alien race, it's alien, and if they're happy at 107 degrees, which is more of a, okay. it was a more of a desert planet. I, I understood. Okay, I, I, I will, I will agree with that. <laughs> However, if I'm a human on that damn planet, I'm saying, hey, bro, little AC, right. right? Can we hook me up? See, and they do. They do help them later. Do they help? I would say they would. But I don't know why they never helped them with air conditioning. <laughs> so that's, that's, that, that was a thing I was thinking of, too. You're right on. Like that or a, a ceiling fan, maybe? <laughs> right. So so two stayed back because they liked it. That's cool, though. I'm sure I they would. got acclimated to the yeah. society. I mean, you're there for 13 years. You got used to it. You probably didn't want to come back to the corruption we got on this planet. Maybe fell in love. Yeah, that's <laughs> actually what one of the... Um, I think it was... Uh, one of the, uh, I was listening to an interview and one of the radio show hosts mm -hmm. said that he thought it was a love thing, but who knows. So they got back in 1978. The government quarantined those people for one year, had many debriefings. There was actually a 3,000 page report. And there was even, when they were uh, like making logs and stuff, they had like something like, was it 1,500 or 15,000 hours of tape? Oh, wow. Because they were recording, like, every day for yep. 10, 13 years. Oh, wow. Then they got to go back to their normal lives. And then they told us the last one died in 2002. But then on this last release that would happen in 2016, we found out that wasn't true. The last one died in December 2014. Mm. And there's no word as of today than the last two that stayed back. Now, so, I want to go thing, through things that stuck out in my head about this. So... They went through some of the day-to-day -day things with these, like how their life was there, uh, like how the planet, there was a lot of different animal life there, and they only found one aggressive being, and that was like a snake-like being. They actually killed it and dissected it, and I believe when they did that, the, the Ebens kind of, there was an Eben escorting him all the time. He's just kind of like, what the? F yeah. <laughs> it's like, that was my damn pet, you bastards. Now, here's where we were talking about the air conditioning. So that, uh, they needed to boil water because the water wasn't clean enough for us to drink over there. Okay. The Evans were nice enough to actually build them a processing plant. So they built a water processing plant, but where's the air conditioning? <laughs> <Son of a laughs> <bitch. laughs> I, mean, I would have a talk with these Evans. That was the first question on my mind. Well, my second question is, did you see the pictures of what Evans is supposed to look like? I don't know. I know love is blind, mm. but damn. <laughs> <laughs> It's all inside, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the crew member that died there in transport. Now, this is another thing that pisses me off. Okay, he died. They were doing their day-to-day -day things, and they finally asked about, where's that body? Where's that body? Oh, it's at this place. They found out that they were doing experiments, doing this hybrid stuff, mm. mixing different DNAs together mm -hmm. to get whatever they could come up with, because that's what they do. That's experimenting. They were ready to go there with dynamite, blow the hell out of the thing just to get the body. body. And it's like, number one, the guy's dead. Number two, these are an alien race, and you're ready to just start a war over something. I hate to say it. It's kind of stupid because the, the body's dead. Mm. It's dead. But they were saying, oh, it's 
our property, we're gonna we have to bring it back to the earth and do all that stuff. Oh, of course they did that. We dissected their dead. That's what I want to get into. Yeah, they were so pissed about what they were doing. We do it all under our yeah. underground basis. It's like, hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure they're gonna do it, you know. And it, I'm sure ours ain't as sophisticated and gentle like they were. Oh yeah. These are actually really loving beings. When you read the story, mm -hmm. it's like you almost kind of tear up just of how like compassionate they were. Mm. Yeah, that would definitely stay then, even without air conditioning. Because then he said, I remember the last sentence. I even typed it up here. We've seen the dark side of the ovens. It's like, okay, we got Dulce base. You read that stuff. Uh, level seven uh, bodies and vats, uh, people, human, humans in cages, whatever else. Who yeah. knows what's going on down there? I mean, we even I, have we even discussed how we're trying to mutate human DNA with like pigs and animals. Oh and yeah, absolutely. I was going to cover that, but I didn't know we've covered it before. But yeah, we're trying to make those homunculi and everything else right well, now. I don't think we ever covered it, but uh, <laughs> I think we've talked about it though. Yeah. So I mean, we do all this stuff, and then we messed up their dead, and then we're going to throw a fit and start a war about one. And that's what I was huh? thinking. It's like you're ready to risk a freaking war over <laughs> a dead yeah. body, and they were nice enough to accommodate oh, us yeah, going yeah. to their planet. Maybe that air conditioning would have came in handy. And that's they another. Got it. And there's other. Th oh. We'll just wait till I show you the list of crap they took with them. Okay, so the Evans don't eat meat, and they looked at them strange when they were eating a beast, and they said it tasted like bear. But I'm, the, what they do when they eat, there's like a one mess hall in the civilization, so they all go there, and they're all like sitting together, and they're eating meat, and the Evans are just kind of like, <laughs> they're just like looking like, because it's like they're, we're eating meat. So that's another thing, too. Who are the bad guys here? It's like we're in oh, there cannibalizing, or yeah. not cannibalizing, but you know what I mean. We're not we're not really following suit to the their culture. Right. We're not being very good yeah. guests in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, agreed. And it's so surprising. What meat they they found that snake breeding, but it wasn't a snake. This was kind of like a. They said it was a beast. They didn't really go into detail and just said it tasted like bear. So some of the language they got on page sixteen. I just want to show the symbols and stuff here. Now, this is their language, apparently. Now, this is written top to bottom, left to right, right to left? Ah, uh, that's a good question. I never came across well, that. Well, you can tell it's been written top to bottom. But uh, these symbols, I don't Some of these look familiar to me. You want to know something very funny? Do you know why, um, like, the Chinese and whatnot uh, write top to bottom from right to left, and we read... Um, Left or right, left or right. Yeah, what's up with that? I, this is great stuff. So they had scrolls, right? Mm -hmm. And the scrolls were made out of, you know, paper, py py papyrus or whatever. So when you open a scroll, you always open it this way. So what they did was they wrote top to bottom, left to right, because that way you could open the scroll and uh, read one line without rain or something getting on it. Yeah. So that's how they did it. And that's why they still write the same way. With And with the printing press, it was easier to, to type. I think that's how it was. I don't know about ours as much. I just read theirs. But I think with the printing press and the way that was set up, it was easier to, to go from left to right and then top to bottom, you know, like this way. And then for them, they, it was easier to go this way. Well, that makes sense because you just read it as you go. Or as you right, go. Set up. Yeah. <laughs> and then, all right, <laughs> come back the other way. Yeah. There's a tidbit of information that has nothing probably – but you can tell this is written from top to bottom because of the space there on the – Three, four, five, uh, between the five and the six line. Um, you see how he's writing straight down, and then he starts coming over, and the same thing. Oh, okay. So they're going down like yeah, this. Yeah, they're writing downwards. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So another interesting aspect, you know, you got like 10, 13 years to kill on a planet. Of course, you're going to do some recreational <laughs> stuff. Um, they played softball with the Evans. Oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> and the one thing that's always I can picture it in my mind immediately, the Evans could never figure out that they had to catch the ball before it hit the ground. <laughs> I can immediately <laughs> see them sitting out there with the glove, and it just, boom, and then they go over and grab it. it. <laughs> and that's all you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> These guys can travel interdimensionally, but they can't figure out softball. That's good. I <laughs> they like had that some one. games, too, that they were they uh, discussed in here. Like, nothing sticks out in my head right now, oh, yeah. but they, they were pretty confused, or we were confused about the game i guess so now here's the list all right this is pretty pretty interesting 
So we got some music we took with us by these oh, uh, got Frank Sinatra. great artists. Oh, my God, Beach right? Beach Boys, Bob Dylan. I mean, you got time to kill. You need to freaking put on the music and dance with an Evans. Oh, yeah. They did like dancing, the Evans. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Of course, you're peaceful folk. So uh, clothing. I mean, you're packing for 10, 13 years. So what are you going to bring? <laughs> They, they took all this thermal underwear, thermal socks, cold weather boots, and it's hot as shit there. That's the thing, though. Yeah. Uh, they didn't know, apparently, huh? Because they bro- they took both warm and cold weather. They had to be packed for anything. That was the whole purpose. They had to be prepared for anything. And they actually did say once they hit that northern hem- uh, hemisphere, some of it actually had snow up there. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay, I suppose. And, you know, who knows if it goes into a colder cycle or... You know, you maybe think different these are seasons. They'd ask, though, too. They don't know. You I know. mean, they just had to be prepared for everything. I, yeah, I, I, yeah. Though that's the motto there, right? So then we got our medical stuff. They did have some uh, radiation kits and stuff. Mm-hmm. Testing equipment. Two hundred cc tractors, uh, drilling tool tractors. <laughs> it took sixteen astronomical telescopes. This is where it gets really like two military star stations. The fuck is Star Station? A thousand pounds of C4 explosives. What the fuck were they going to do? <laughs> That's the, the C4 explosives I were talking about. They're ready to blow that door open. And it's like, okay. okay. <laughs> There's six diamond trip mill. Oh, my God. One nuclear detonating kit. <laughs> you know, the Evans were nice enough to let you come on this trip, folks. <laughs> okay, one quick question. Don't you think the Evans might have had an issue with this armament, though? They're that's what, I, loving, that's right? what they said. I was like, holy crap, you guys are... Le- and I, we get into it here. Look oh, at the yeah. weapons they bring with them. 50 military... Oh, that's the weather balloons. Okay, 24 military handguns, 24 military rifles. You know, all this stuff. And like 5,000 rounds of two two three. Well, I got a little bit of an issue with that. And, and they were like... They actually didn't care, surprisingly. Why do you need... And I would be... If you're going to somebody's planet... You know, take maybe a little bit with, but well, yeah. this is like going to start a freaking world war on their <laughs> Well, if you have only 10 people going, why do you need 24 M16s? And the well, handguns, I mean, are where, probably 19. Where they have to be prepared if you lose one or, you know, maybe a piece breaks or... You never lose your rifle in the military. Never. I mean, I could see taking an extra one. Or everybody. maybe... That's 20. Why they, four? Okay, they had yeah. to prepare for everything. So let's just say... So and they're going to arm the snake beasts. Let's just say an alien invasion happened while they were there. Well, maybe you have to arm some Evans or something, even though they have their probably own technology. But. Pretty sure they can. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And then here's <laughs> all these, okay, 10 military-style combat motorcycles, three mil- uh, military Jeeps, three military trailers, and then one lawnmower just in case you want to mow the Evans lawn <laughs> there. <laughs> 1,500 gallons of fuel. Because even in the military, no matter what, you're going to get you're gonna get extra duty and have to mow the f***ing lawn. That's what that is. And I know because I've got a lot of extra duty when I was in. So when you get in trouble, you mow the lawn. So now we move on to our food. We got sea rations, 25-pack containers, 100. So you, does this stuff look familiar to you? Is this like a yeah. lot? Uh, 25 pre-packed containers of sea rations. I wouldn't. I wouldn't know what the container looks like. I mean, that's quite a bit of food, I suppose. But I think, from what I understood, they had like crates. Did like, they have an energy lot. bars back in the day? A hundred containers of energy bars. I like this too. Make sure to bring the lifesaver candy with. <laughs> Actually, that's interesting. The reason why the military puts lifesavers, um, uh, skittles, and those types of things in the MREs is it's a boost of morale. So you know, when you're out there and you're war fighting, or even just out in the field for a couple months. Then you open your MRE up and you look down and you're like, <laughs> you know, like I got the beef routine or some <laughs> again that you don't want, but there's always uh, that little sweetness that goes with it. And it's just supposed to kind of make you was happy. It, was it always lifesavers or was there something else? Uh, I We had lifesavers. Um, the ones that I liked were the charms. It's uh, like a gummy candy. You can find them at gas stations once in a while. Every time I see one, I grab it and I'm like, oh my God, I remember this. And then I eat it. I'm like, it wasn't that great. Um and now I guess the MREs, I was talking to a few other guys who've gotten out more recently than I have, and they have um, Skittles and stuff, I think. But, yeah, they always put a little bit of something like that in there. I like that they have the 16 boxes of various alcoholic wines. <laughs> yeah. 
So yeah, you can you can kind of get the idea of the scope of no, what, what yeah. they brought with them. Two thousand pounds of various other items, and it says more to come. Did they ever give you more to I come? I never okay. recall seeing any more after that. I like the lawnmower. I love that. I had to highlight that one because that was like, okay, you need a lawnmower because <laughs> another thing I want to point out here too, they did bring these Jeeps and motorcycles with, but they actually never really ended up using them that much because the Evans had stuff that hovered off the of ground course, and got yeah. there quicker. So, so I'm sure it just kind of sat. Where the hell were they going to go anyway? The idea was to explore the planet and oh. get an idea of all that stuff. And they did. They, they actually took their... Uh, it had some kind of a vehicle that hovered off the ground, like a helicopter type thing. It didn't have a blade or anything, but they ended up exploring a lot of the planet. Oh, okay. And then later on, there's this island. They came back. We, I think we're still actually having contact with these guys. And they came back in 2009 and had a meeting. I had to bring this up because this is a very interesting spot where they chose to land. Okay, we got Pacific oh, yeah. Coast over here. We got Hawaii. We're in the middle of damn nowhere. Back that up a little bit. Okay, so we got it right here in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And we zoom in on this thing. The, 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 the landing took place up here, supposedly, on this island. Oh, that's man-made. It's pretty, uh, yeah, you can see that it's, it almost looks like there's like a fence around it here. Or a wall. Yeah, definitely is. But uh, not, I don't really here. see too much. It looks like there's some buildings in here. But and then what's interesting is you come down here, not that far away. This looks like an aircraft carrier right in the middle of the ocean. That's a really long <laughs> runway, actually. And a lot of this looks like, I don't think these, it almost looks like it's not even used yeah, anymore. It's overgrown, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Like It almost looks like the buildings are gone, too. Yeah, that is all overgrown. That... I would like to see, uh, what's this one named? Do you know what this island's name is? Uh, if you just type in AKAU Island, it'll bring you up to the uh, the one up here. It puts a pin up here. Well, that's interesting because that's a fortified airstrip, and I mean, this I can't is tell. It's, it's overran, but it looks like some of those marks on the airstrip look like they've been recent. Oh, repainted? No, like planes have landed, but I can't tell. Um, and that's just hypothetical. This would be a great place to do some urban X, but it does look like it's overgrown and all. I, I don't know. Maybe it's like a... Well, there's a few of these places that we built bases on, um, especially during the Cold War and, and uh, Vietnam War and whatnot, which um, that's perfect cloud cover there at the end. And it's like, it, it probably gets hit by hurricanes and crap being right there. I mean, slap, slap, slap. Yeah, that's really cool. What's on the level of the two little island? I'm curious. And there seems to be a... St yeah, there's stuff there, too. Well, that's, yeah, that's interesting. That's man-made. That's straight as hell. And they have... It almost looks like there's a dock that's... Mm-hmm. A couple of them. Degraded. Wow. But what a perfect place to have. Uh, I like how they've wiped out that darker blue on the left there. That's them going in there and shading something. They don't want you to see whatever's there. Oh, yeah. Yep. If you scroll out, there's some more of it, too. Um, there's some around think of that. The, yep. That's all scrubbed out. That's a good point. Yep. Wow. So maybe they have a new island here with it. The... There very well could be. Jeez. Or there's something there that they, um, they go. Yeah, the, it's all scrubbed around the main island, too, there. Especially where that cloud is. You see how that, yeah, the shadows of the clouds. I wonder there's shadows on other areas that aren't darkened. Uh, you don't think that would bit. be like the mapping? Like, well, no. No, that's, right. that's definitely not. That is all scrubbed. But anyway, what a place in the middle of nowhere. But I think later on they kind of decided not to hmm. do it here because look how far they have to travel by boat to kind of... Or... Oh, no, that'd be... Fair. They have an uh, airstrip. You'd take off from Hawaii. Yeah. You'd be there in a couple hours. That airstrip's long enough. Probably, uh, I don't know that But the original landings took place in Arizona, Nevada, yeah. and all that stuff. Well, that's but... a perfect spot. There ain't nobody there, and no one's going to you know be passing by, you know, shipping vessels or anything else. And I wouldn't know of uh, cruise ships and uh, other things that have uh, 
shipping lane through there. But yeah, that's a excellent spot to stay out of the way from everything. What's pretty cool is Reagan was actually briefed on this whole thing on page 27A here. You can actually, if you're ever interested, go through it and read it. I was reading it. It was like, it felt like I was in the room and, you know, he's asking all the questions that you'd kind of ask coming into this fresh. Very interesting. But they would, so apparently it was all recorded on Wait, tape and stuff like that. Can you like go that. down a little bit? That occurred inside the Soviet Union in 1970. Oh, that was probably this over here. Okay. This is an actual official document that the Russians encountered, and they said it was a UFO okay. that landed and stuff, and then they were shooting at it, and it's like, oh, okay, that's just great. <laughs> <laughs> so now here's, I got some problems with the story. Like I said, there's there's a lot of good info here, but there's discrepancies in the story. Some of it, like you said, where's the air conditioning? Um Lots of other questions, and you got 12 men, or was it 10 men and two women? There was that issue there. Oh, 24 makes more sense. I thought it was only 10. Yeah, all right, my fault. When it came to the guns, I'm sorry. That's two, no, that's two 12. for each. Okay, 12. Yeah. That makes more sense. Yeah, yeah. I, I refrain. <laughs> okay. And then the the thing is, this guy, too, he said the Phoenix lights were flares. No, I don't believe that there were flares. I believe that was an official UFO. And he said, Billy Myers was a hoax. Yeah, Billy Myers did make some fake ones because he re wanted to recreate the, the UFO craft, and he built one in his garage. And then that's how they went off and said, oh, this guy's a fake, and he's faking the whole thing. Mm. Here's some statistics on the Ebon Planet, if anybody's interested, actually. Yeah, so we got our diameter. It's actually just a little bit smaller than the Earth by about 700 miles or so. Actually had two moons. So if you're interested in that stuff, it's all there. I think there is a video game where you can set up moons and earth or er, and er, and bodies like that. I got to look at that up because you would be able to utilize this to figure out it, what the gravity would be like and if it was even possible to have a, a system like this. Yeah, according to who's math. Though. <laughs> well, it's it's based on <laughs> that's physics, the so. other thing though. It's like they when they went there, they found out our our uh, the physics the way we know it on this planet does not apply on the other planet. Oh, really? Yeah, so this is alien. You have to think alien. So we're thinking way out of the box here. Now, here's another thing I have a problem with this. They had some pictures, and they were supposed to release some good pictures. The ones they did release are kind of like, <laughs> really? So let's take a look. They pull her up. This is supposed to be the planet. Uh, that looked, looks kind of CGI to me. Well, not even that. I mean, you could find something like that on earth in the desert yeah you could place those that's egypt i like the round rock on the far right here that's kind of sticking out you see it this there. One? <laughs> it's like an eyeball <laughs> wait, wait 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 go back to that real quick there was no footprints in there well it doesn't necessarily have to be well you would think they're walking around and it'd be yeah there's no footprints anywhere on there something huh. was in here snake that's that snake person thing. <laughs> I f***ed that thing up with that little round rock, and they did dissected him in the back and ate him later. He tasted like bear. Yeah, I mean, uh, it doesn't have to be. I just Now, here's the one that's supposed to be the two suns, which this uh, one would be hard to fake either. What the hell's wrong with that other sun? Why is it blurry? Is Maybe it, it's is a cloud it... coverage. It looks like there's some kind of a cloud here. Okay. You know how we got clouds? <laughs> no <laughs> Are those those things that are up in the sky that have, like, they, uh, yeah. But definitely not impressed. Another one here. That looks like Earth. This is this looks like a whole different biome, too. Like, the other ones look desert, and this looks more like, uh, and there's more green in it. Yeah, they did. Like they said, once they went farther north, there was more green. Okay. This looks like a road right here. Yeah, a uh, straight line. It has I to be a road. I don't know if Evans yeah. made roads or no, not. No, of course not. They fucking hover everywhere. <laughs> Maybe they did it for the humans so they can take their lawnmower out and take it around the block a little bit. Now, this must have been supposed to be a scary animal or whatever that lives on the planet. This is obviously a drawing. Do you want to know why it's so scary? That son of a bitch could hear you from four miles away. <laughs> Looks like they hide with their ears. It's a mosquito, too. And then this is supposed to be a mask that the Evans wear. Why the hell for do they the, have to wear masks? Well, for rituals or whatever. Nothing special. Is that fi actual fire flying out the back of that mask? Looks like a lion. 
But this is, you see where I'm getting. They were supposed to release, and they even said that, oh, we got pictures coming of Evans. They took a picture of all the guys posing in front of the Evans house with the Evans with them. Okay, We yeah. haven't seen that picture yet, and it was supposed to be released. I want to see that picture. Yep, I looked on the internet, and they said they haven't released it yet. Damn you, internet. So that's really kind of what I got. A, a good story. I would love to see a movie on that, because... You could easily oh. make it into a movie, like, here's these aliens, we're going to their planet, right. and then make it a little scary, like, oh, now they, they, our bodies, they took that dead guy's body, put it in the vat. Yeah. And it would be interesting. You wouldn't have to have a tale of evil aliens. It, I, would, I would just like it for the positivity of the yeah. seeing Ooh, another Netflix planet. original. There you go. Yeah. Hey, Netflix, I got an idea for you. <laughs> Sign me, me up. up. Yeah. I'm a creative guy. So that's about it. I uh, like this. I, I mean, this is something that I've never heard of. So I'm thrilled that you brought this. I really am. I think it's great. Um, still pissed me. they didn't make any fucking air conditioning. From Mike. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Uh, great topic. I think I heard of it before, and I never really thought twice about looking into it. But yeah, it's definitely a good one. If you if you have time, it's a good read. But like I said. Yeah. I want the su- where's the substance? Where's where? Yeah, <laughs> don't give me damn big-eared mosquitoes. So, with that being said, thank you guys for joining us on Talk Is Cheap. This was a goodie, and I I, I hope you love it. And uh, yeah, I'm Dan Hofel signing off with Talk Is Cheap. I'm Dusty Long, and I hope you all have a great day. Bye bye.